Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Uh, big important topic today, density, so let's dive right in. We can use density to uh, do some graphing with, and we can also use it to introduce the concepts of intensive and extensive, which are important terms you'll see a lot in chemistry. So to get right into it, we have the cat and mouse here, making some density, destiny jokes here. So feel free to use that uh, pickup line. If you don't know who the koalas are, you haven't been watching. And so that gives a little teaser to the idea of intensive properties there. So density is a relationship between mass and volume. Now the units in chemistry are usually in grams per milliliter. And that's a very simple statement, but there's a lot of ramifications from that. Density is an intensive property, which means that it is independent of the amount of matter that you have. Uh, which means that a, a simple test is if you were to change the size of the object, if the property didn't change, then it's probably intensive. So for instance, the color of an object, the chemical reactivity to other things, and of course density are all intensive properties. A bigger object would have the same properties as, a, as opposed to an extensive property that would change with the amount. Interestingly enough, the two properties that go into density, uh, mass and volume, are both extensive, both change with the size of the object, but when you put those things in a relationship against each other, which we'll do graphically on the next page, you'll notice that you end up with a property that is independent of either. And so let's try to graph this. Graphing is always a good thing to do when you can get away with it. And so what we're going to do in a graph for density is we're going to set the y-axis equal to mass, and we're going to set the x-axis equal to volume. And, and you'll see why we do this. And so when we plot these points, we're going to make a best fit line. Now some tips on a best fit line. Remember that try to avoid using your data points for best fit lines. Uh, why, why even bother plotting all those points if you're just gonna pick two pieces of data and make a line between them. Um, with density, your best fit line should track towards the zero to the origin, and that should make sense because as things get smaller, both mass and volume should be getting smaller proportionally. And so if we take the slope of this line, slope is rise over run, and the way we set up our graph, rise ends up being mass, and volume ends up being the run, and so we end up with mass over volume. And so uh, I picked two points. I had a difference of y of 69 and a difference of x of 24. I tried to use a pretty big spread uh, to figure out my best fit. And so I ended up with 2.9 grams per milliliter. And you can certainly read the scales of a graph. And so if you have a larger graph, you should be able to dig a little deeper into the significant figures of your answer. And so the slope of the line equals the density, uh, which, is, which is interesting, uh, because no matter what your mass is, given the density, you could calculate the volume or vice versa. And so mass is directly portion of volume. That should make sense. As one goes up, the other goes up. If it was the other way, it would be an inverse relationship. One went up, the other went down. An example of this would be a seesaw, but in chemistry, an example of this would be something like some of the gas laws. Uh, there's a gas law that says when pressure goes up, the volume of a gas goes down. So you will run into these kind of relationships also. Now the, the, the great thing about density is that density is an intensive property, so it can be used to identify stuff. And remember when we talked about pure substances, uh, we said that uh, pure substances have specific chemical and physical properties. One of these specific physical properties is density. Um, so pure substances can be identified through density. Mixtures cannot. Uh, because a mixture doesn't, you know, since it kind of variable proportions, the density can vary also. Um, so it might get you close to what's in there, but it won't be able to tell you exactly what's in there. And one of the classic examples of density being able, used to identify stuff is the legend of Archimedes' crown. And uh, the, the story goes that um, Archimedes did not find the mass and the volume of the crown. Uh, he was hired by the king because the king gave a certain amount of gold to a goldsmith who gave him back a crown of that same mass. Uh, but the king was worried that the crown was not pure gold. Uh, so the king asked Archimedes to come up with a non-destructive way to figure out whether it was gold or not. And what Archimedes realized is that um, uh, if he were to take equal masses of the crown and pure gold, since they have equal mass, they should displace equal volume. Um, in the legend, they did not uh, displace equal volumes, and so the king knew it was not pure gold. 
So although you might be tempted to say that Archimedes found the mass and the volume of the crown and then calculated the density, that's not actually how he did it in legend. Now, there are people that argue that Archimedes could have never done this, that the crowns of the time were too thin to see a reasonable volume difference through displacement. And that may well be true, but conceptually it's possible. So if you had a large amount of gold and a large amount of something that wasn't gold, uh, they would not displace the same volume. Um, now, this example is not the same way Archimedes did this, but we can, we, if we have these mass and volume measurements, we could calculate the density of gold and compare that. But remember, that's different than what Archimedes did. He, he compared the volume of the ground to the volume of the gold and saw that they weren't the same displacement given the same mass. So same concept, different way of doing it. Um, so if the ring you have is only 16 grams per milliliter, uh, it's unlikely to be pure gold. And finally, uh, in, in a more qualitative sense, uh, remember that uh, we can use density to differentiate things. If they're not the same density, they're not going to uh, uh, um, fall to the same place in something like a density column. A density column is a, is, a, is a tube full of liquids of different density, and you drop something in, and it tends to settle where, where it belongs in the density column. Uh, it won't, it'll stay above denser columns, but drop below less dense columns. But really, the whole, the whole atmosphere is sort of a density column. I mean, you drop to the bottom of the atmosphere, so you're less dense than the atmosphere. And if you sink in water, you're, you're more dense than the water. And if you float, you're less dense than the water, which is where you get into something like the Red Sea, which is more dense, and you float on top of that. And so ice floats on water, so it is, it is less dense, which is interesting. You wouldn't expect a solid to float in its own liquid, but, but that's a, a story for another day. And so uh, hopefully that introduction to density was helpful to you. And uh, remember that density can be used to identify things. So don't forget in your chem journeys, if you need to identify something, if it's a pure substance, uh, think about using density. And so that's all we're going to cover for today. Thanks for watching and have a great day.